In our first example, we have a large battery. It is connected to a resistor, two lamps, and an ammeter. Everything is connected to form a single loop, as in the example above. This is called being in series. So the trick is always start with the battery. The battery is the source of energy there. And a battery is a short line and a long line. And I like to have it, this is a big battery, so I'm piling a bunch of cells together. Let's say it's like a 9-volt battery. I like to have it so that the positive end faces up and the negative end faces down, so I can use my gravity analogy. And then batteries always have two terminals, one at the top, one at the bottom. Then I'm going to have this go to the top of my electric hill and then have it flow downhill. And what's it connected to? First, a resistor. What's a resistor? A resistor is like a crooked pipe, remember? And then it's connected to two light bulbs. So there's one light bulb. I'm putting a little dot to show that these are different circuit elements. There's my second light bulb. And then it's connected to an ammeter, which is just connected in series. And then everything forms a single loop. So we have to connect it back to the bottom so that we get the circuit to flow there. So again, um, a good way to picture this is going to be our little circuit construction kit we're going to use later. And I know this one had two light bulbs in it and a resistor and all that. But what I want to show you here is this idea of using that gravity analogy to flow down. And in order to measure the current, you have to put in what's called an ammeter. An ammeter has to go into the circuit. Otherwise, you don't get a reading. You have to actually put it into the circuit so that the, the water, think of it that way, can flow through there. So this is about 0.9 amps in this case here. So an ammeter goes in series into the circuit. Now contrast that to number two. Here we have a battery. So let's go ahead and draw out our battery. It doesn't really say small or big. It doesn't matter. I like to have it so that the positive end faces up and the negative end is on the bottom here. And this is now connected to a resistor. Piece of cake. So there's my resistor. And then it says that we have a voltmeter on either side of the resistor forming a second loop. This is called being in parallel. So the trick is anytime you want to measure voltage you have to put it off to the side to form a second loop otherwise you don't get a reading. And the reason why is voltage measures the energy difference you can think of as between two points there. It's the potential difference there. So for example, let's go back to our little circuit simulator you're going to use later. If I turn on my voltmeter if I actually tried to put this into the circuit directly, it would just read zero. It would give me like a garbage reading. So to get a reading in parallel, I have to touch it off to the side, off to the side here to get a reading. Um, that's negative because I flipped my leads there. That's the negative end of the battery. This is the positive end. There we go. So volt voltage goes in parallel off to the side. So if you think about it, um, you can also think of this like a highway. In a series circuit, there's only one path for the current to flow. So in the old days, you know what's annoying? Christmas lights are, are usually wired in, in series. It's cheaper. If one light bulb burns out, what happens? The whole chain goes out. Now in parallel, what's kind of cool is you have not just one path for the current to flow, but what? You have two, two or more. Parallel just means that you have two or more connections. That's all. Now what we're going to do is one more thing. It's not on the sheet, but I want you to label the positive and negative end of each circuit element. What do I mean by that? This is the positive end of the resistor. This is the negative end. This is the positive end of my first light bulb. This is the negative end. And all I'm saying is it's not positive and negatively charged. It's at a higher voltage versus lower voltage um, than the previous circuit element. So for example, if this was a 9 volt battery, this would be 9 volts. At the top of my electric hill, this would be 0 volts. Then when it went through the resistor, it might drop to 8, through the light bulb, down to 7, through the other light bulb, 6, through the ammeter, down to 0. And later on then, when we go to wire our circuits, that makes our life a lot easier because then we know which circuit element connects where. And what's tricky is you've been brainwashed that positive always goes to negative because you're trained to stick in batteries so that the voltage builds up. But in real life, you could have positive go to positive, negative go to negative. It doesn't matter. It just depends on what you're trying to build. So in a nutshell, we were just trying to go over some international symbols so that when you design a circuit, everybody speaks the same language. They speak nerdy electricity there. And that way we can make really cool stuff.